What's up everybody, hopefully you guys are doing good as always. My name is Itai and today I'll be sharing the Danish Gambit. It's a very aggressive gambit, but as you're about to see, most of the lines are pretty pleasant for you. I'll be talking about the main lines as well as sharing a chess game where the da Danish Gambit was used. Make sure if you aren't already, you subscribe to my channel so you never miss a chess video and if you have chess ideas that you want to see in future videos, then leave them down below. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a Danish while you learn about the Danish Gambit. The Danish Gambit is a gambit you play as white that begins with e4, e5, d4, once the pawn takes, c3 rather than capturing back with the queen. If the pawn were to take a second time, you can play c4, and if the pawn were to take a third time, you finally capture back with bishop to b2. And when you gambit so many pawns so quickly, you need a lot of compensation off the bat. And here the compensation is very obvious. It's this doubled bishop pairing that are eyeing down this these pieces here. And in most of the lines, these bishops become um, the main game changer that will win back pieces and sometimes will allow for checkmates to happen. And you'll see in the, in the main lines that I share in the future, these bishops are really what hold the white pieces together. And they're what form the attacks and usually will help you win the game. From this position, black has a couple of options, the first of which is to kick out their own their own bishop. You have to be careful as black not to kick it out to hearsay because then you're already hanging a pawn. So you can see that already from the start this bishop here is already stopping uh, black from playing a couple of moves that usually in most lines would just be very normal uh, for black to play to, to be able to develop and castle. Um, so obviously this is not really an option. So sometimes you might see this move. The idea is that now um, black obviously can no longer lose this pawn because it, this this move here is coming with check. Now what you want to be careful about is not giving away your pairing of bishops. These bishops are the most important thing uh, for you right now. They're the, the reason that you ended up gambiting all these pawns. So instead of a move like this where you could lose your bishop, you're going to be wanting to play a move like this. And although it is blocking your bishop temporarily, um, let's say you were to trade, uh, this could end up being quite nice for you uh, because eventually this will still be able to give you that double bishop pairing. And if you don't end up trading, and let's say that uh, black were to play a move like d6, now hoping to open up this other bishop, um, this knight doesn't end up being much of a problem because of the move queen over here to b4, or to b3. And now, uh, not only is the queen threatening to capture the bishop, but the queen is also threatening uh, to capture this pawn which will come in check, which leaves the, the, the bishop with really only one option, which is to capture the knight. So eventually, you will most likely end up trading this knight, whether black initiates it or you initiate it with queen over here to b3. And once this happens, wow, is this a huge threat. You're threatening to not only still win this pawn with check, but now you're also threatening to win this pawn, which will let you then win this rook. So already you can see how powerful these doubled uh, diagonals are, um, especially with the queen here. Uh, you're now threatening to win two pawns, and there's nothing that black can do to protect both of these pawns. Uh, so for example, if black tries this, protecting this pawn, you obviously win the pawn and eventually the rook. If black were to try a move uh, like this, for example, maybe trying to stop you from winning this pawn, maybe putting pressure on this pawn, you can very easily just play this move as it comes with check so you don't end up losing your pawn immediately and you still have time to react. And, you know, you're just putting sh so much pressure on black that overall uh, you're most likely going to win the pawns quite fast. Um, and, and obviously if black were to ever really capture, you're, they're hanging their own pawn. Um, so even if you don't end up protecting this piece, realistically, you're just going to trade another pawn. So you can see that this has become very, very pleasant for you. Another move you might see as from black is the move c6. Um, and with this move, black is essentially signaling to you that black would like to castle queenside. So they're trying to develop all their, uh, you know, queenside uh, minor pieces. And the idea with castling queenside is to try to uh, avoid these bishops threatening mate, right? If the king were to end up getting here and castling kingside, then these bishops would be very harmful. So the king is trying to move to the other side, and honestly, it's, it's a good idea by black. I think this move is definitely the best, and uh, honestly, there isn't really um, off-the-bat pawns that you could win like you did last time. Sure, you can try to form attacks, 
but I would recommend to just develop normally. And like every other opening, first focus on castling and only then using your uh, pieces to attack because these bishops will always be here. You'll never really be able to, um, you know, no, black will never be able to win them. So there's no pressure on trying to form attacks fast. Um, so instead, you can just play normal development moves, castle, and only when you see fitting, then start attacking with your, your doubled bishops. Um, because once again, these bishops will always be able to attack with you. Um, and there's a, a funny line, or at least a line that I think I should mention, which is this move. And rather than having to worry about, you know, this pawn being unprotected if you castle, you can simply castle, because if the, the knight were to take, there's a very nice move, uh, which is bishop over here. Um, the king obviously will take, uh, and then you can you can play this move and win back the knight. Um, and in fact, wherever the king goes, it will be check, right? The king, no matter where the king goes, uh, you will win more tempo because all of these spots are supported by the queen. So even if the king were to go here, this is still check, and you're just winning more tempo. So you can see that although uh, you did gambit a very important piece for you, this doubled uh, bishops, um, there is sometimes reasons to do that, and, and here's one of them, okay? So this seems like you're losing the pawn, but you're not actually losing the pawn. I wanted to just show a final example, which is actually a game that was played using the Danish Gambit, to just show you how powerful it actually is. Once the Danish Gambit is uh, set out, and we get to this position, which is the accepted position, Black decided to play this move, which is one of the options we talked about. Make sure to block with c3 with the knight rather than with the bishop because once again, the bishops are the precious thing for you right now that you wanna keep and maintain. And now we saw the move d6. The idea is to open up the diagonal and white responded with this move. Again, it's just the best move and it's the move that a lot of times you're gonna, you're gonna end up playing with your queen. You're threatening to take the, the bishop, you're threatening to win this pawn with check it's quite harsh on black. Black would obviously have to try to play this move, but that doesn't really help you. And here, uh, we covered this move and this move, both of which are bad. In this game, we actually end up seeing this move, which I actually um, don't like either at all, uh, because although it does protect this pawn here, the problem with this move is that once we win this pawn and force the king to move you know, away uh, as its check, um, the, the queen would have to, well, we'd win tempo because the queen would have to move after this very, you know, pleasant developing move f3. So the queen here would usually end up having to bounce away anyways. Um, the queen goes here, just try to put more pressure, but that doesn't bother us because we'd, you know, we'd happily sacrifice this pawn um, to get our rook involved with tempo, forcing the queen away because we've just gotten another piece, making this the only viable square for the, the black king. So all we need is to check our opponent, which should not be hard. So this is just going to be very, very, um, a very fast checkmate. And a lot of the games in this opening uh, end up being, you know, less than 20 moves because you end up attacking so early on with your doubled bishops that it's hard for black to respond. But anyways, in the actual game, uh, what ended up happening, uh, what ended up happening was that Anyways, in the actual game, what ended up happening was knight over here trying to put the bishop away because the bishop is quite annoying, and white just, you know, moved the bishop away, and that's that's not much of a problem for white right now because they still have this doubled bishop. And now black could try to continue developing pieces, but you can already see this is just so overwhelming for black, and uh, white now finally offers this pawn because... Um, before the pawn was hanging a lot, and there's no reason to hang a pawn if you can just easily trade it. But notice that after black took, rather than taking with the bishop, and therefore losing uh, the doubled bishops that you worked so hard to get, um, black managed, or black ended up taking with the knight. Uh, so make sure, never trade your bishops, uh, unless it absolutely is you know guaranteed to lead you somewhere very pleasant. Um, and this is, I mean, I can already end the, the game here. I'll tell you the game continued like this, but there's not really any any you know continuation that isn't pleasant for white. So you can see how powerful the gambit is. One thing I wanted to mention before ending off the video is that 
Um, there is also a declined variation like every gambit. And if you play this move, the declined variation, the, the most common move in the declined variation, that is, is this move over here. And I will try to make another video talking about the declined variation, not only this move, but other uh, responses you might see. Because if you end up trying to play this gambit and your opponent does not take the pawn, I don't want you to be, you know, stumped and have nothing to do. So I will try to put out a video. If the video is already out, then I will put a little uh, message right now in the top that you can press the I button and it'll take you to the video. And so hopefully you can learn all about the Danish Gambit, even the declined variation. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot and are, you know, willing to use this Gambit because it's always nice to try new things in chess that, although might not be that strong, can end up, you know, winning you games in 20 moves. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Comment down future videos you want to see, and I'll see you all next time. Peace out.